This segment of Domarva Life is brought to you by Tidal Health. You know, it can be easy to forget the kinds of strains and stresses we put on our body. When we're lifting, running, bending, or stretching, our joints and muscles are doing lots of work, whether we realize it or not. And one of those body parts that we might take for granted is the shoulders. If you'll stop and think for a second about just how many activities and actions you perform on a daily basis that requires strong shoulders. So, what do you do when your shoulder gets hurt? So we bring in an expert on the topic with us this afternoon, Dr. Andrew Curley with Tidal Health Orthopedics. Break it all down for us. Thank you, sir, for being here. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Yeah, so I understand you have an interest in sports medicine. Why? Uh, yes, I played sports myself. Um, I was a football and lacrosse player, and I played in high school and college, and I had sports injuries myself. Um, and that got me interested in sports medicine. So I enjoy the aspect of taking care of athletes and helping them recover from an injury and get back onto the field. Okay. Now, now you specialize in, in, in shoulder replacement surgery. Um, what kind of, I guess, shoulder conditions or injuries do you treat surgically and non-surgically? Sure. Um, so I, I treat a whole spectrum of shoulder injuries, ranging from shoulder dislocations to tears of the soft tissue, such as the labrum or the rotator cuff, as well as shoulder arthritis. Um, any patient that comes into my clinic, I always try to get them better without surgery, if at all possible, using treatments such as physical therapy or injections. So is there a point that a patient can identify, oh, time to replace this shoulder? Good question. So not every patient that comes into my office with shoulder arthritis necessarily needs a shoulder replacement. Oftentimes we can get those patients feeling better with some of the non-operative treatments I just mentioned. Right. But when those treatments fail to provide symptomatic relief and their symptoms that they're having limit what they wanna do on a day-to-day -day basis and their quality of life is suffering, then that's the point where we sit down and we have a more in-depth discussion about moving forward with the shoulder replacement surgery. So with the, the shoulder surgery, what kind of recovery are, are we looking at? Oftentimes patients are in a sling anywhere from four to six weeks after surgery. Um, after that, we get them out of the sling and we get them moving under supervised um, movements with physical therapists and we start building up their strength. Usually around five to six months, they're doing a lot of the things that they wanna do on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's safe to say everybody's different. How, how do you customize for patients? Sure. Um, so when a patient uh, first comes into my clinic, I try to gain an understanding of what their goals are and what activities they're trying to get back to. So I take these factors into account, trying to assess what their goals are, where they're at, and I try and help them ultimately live in, uh, an active, healthy lifestyle, whatever that may be for that individual. And it's not just shoulders and knees, it's hips too? Sure. Um, so after my sports medicine fellowship at the University of Pittsburgh, I spent additional time in Chicago uh, undergoing additional training in hip preservation surgery. So that includes surgeries like hip scopes or hip arthroscopy. Um, this is a rapidly advancing field of orthopedics focused on treating uh, hip conditions, particularly in younger patients. And these conditions are causing hip pain for reasons other than arthritis. Mm. And with a lot of the newer surgical techniques that are coming out, we're able to treat these conditions in a minimally invasive manner through the hip scope rather than a large incision that we use in the past. Mm. So you have really got to stay up to date with the latest of what's going on. Yeah, the field of orthopedics is rapidly changing and there's new advancements and techniques coming out every day. Wow. Um, so it takes a lot to stay up to date and I've tried to contribute to these advancements myself with uh, several publications and peer reviewed journals over the past couple of years. And I found that writing these articles and going through this publishing process, you have to read the other studies that are out there to see how your study fits into the, what's already published. And then in addition to publishing, I, uh, I try to go to conferences and courses on a regular basis to learn these new techniques and advancements and to ultimately make sure I'm providing the most up-to-date care for my patients. It's an ever-evolving field. It Dr. Is. Andrew Curley, thank you so much. Very interesting.